Feel the heart. Experience the soul. Community Pulse. Dr. Faiz, assalamu alaikum and shukran so much for joining me. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Zainab. How are you this morning? I'm oh, very well, alhamdulillah. You, how, are, how are you doing? I'm, you haven't been so well this week. I think I am on the road to recovery. Okay, well, let's <laughs> Slowly getting good. there, slowly getting there, alhamdulillah. Good to know. Good and to I'm know. really, really pleased for the uh, bits of rain that we are getting, alhamdulillah. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. We, we need as much rain as we can, absolutely. We can get, actually. Yeah. Definitely. Now, as I mentioned, the last conversation we had, uh, Dr. Faiz, we kind of um, uh, had two programs discussing the um, global health crisis and um, m- there was many things that came to the fore but just to, to recap where we left off uh, where did we wh- what exactly was the the outcome of our discussion I mentioned a couple of things aspects of the global health crisis like the win lack of awareness crisis the critical thinking crisis the cost crisis the chronic diseases crisis <laughs> so many aspects to the crisis and I also said I wanted to mention something about the myths that perpetuate this mm. crisis and even sometimes generate the crisis and maybe we should do that we could maybe start with mm. the myths because it's really important for people to understand mm. first of all what a myth is i'm sure most people know what a myth is but just to remind you know people what a myth is a myth is really a widely held but a false belief mm. so it's a delusion in other words it's something that is you believe it but it's not true mm. okay and I, and i like when i talk about myths and delusions and that type of thing i like to tell a joke <laughs> So if you don't mind, shall I tell? It's a very Go short ahead. joke. Uh, it was actually in third year when the lecturer walked in, you know, it was a pathology lecturer. I was an American medical student and uh, he was going to lecture to us on a certain topic. And he started off with this joke. And he said, uh, you know, this was a psychiatrist walked into the ward, doing his ward round. He came to this one patient's bed and he said, good morning, Mr. Brown. So the patient looks at him and says, but I'm not Mr. Brown, doctor. So the psychiatrist says, oh, that's interesting. So who are you? So the patient says, well, I'm Napoleon Bonaparte. So the psychiatrist said, wow, that's interesting. But tell me, who told you that you are Napoleon Bonaparte? So the patient says, well, God told me so. And just then the patient in the next bed jumped up and said, no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> that's called a delusion of grandeur. <laughs> a false belief in your own self-importance. <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one. Um, but but let's let's get into the myths, into those myths. So um, so there are people walking <laughs> the earth today thinking they are God, you know. So uh, it's not uncommon actually. <laughs> so um, the f- one myth I mentioned last week was the myth that you know building more hospitals will actually solve the healthcare mm. crisis because the Minister of Health is looking for money to build more hospitals. So the crisis is not caused by a deficiency in hospitals. The crisis is caused by the fact that we're not addressing the causes of the crisis. Mm. That's what we need to understand, what's causing this crisis, and address it at that level on the plane of causality, Mm. not on the plane of effect. Once the thing has happened, now you want to address, uh, try and solve it. It's more intelligent to solve things, you know, at the level of the cause. So one of the myths is that building more hospitals is going to solve the healthcare crisis. Mm. Another myth is that doctors know best how to get their patients healthy and well. Now we know, and I'm a western trained doctor even if you're a alternatively trained doctor you can't really make a patient healthy and well mm. only the patient can take action to make themselves healthy and well only they can do it the, your body is designed to actually your body is a healing machine it wants to heal it wants to be healthy okay mm. but you need to give it the right things you need to remove whatever shouldn't be in the body and the body is actually designed to heal but only the patient can take the action you know mm. take the necessary steps to do what they need to do to get healthy. Um, I mean, what the doctor must, can do is actually guide the, pre- the patient through yeah. the process, mm. give them the information, the advice. And that's what my institute's about, is giving you information, giving you advice, giving you tools, and showing you how to do this, you know, in the proper way. And I'll actually, when you talk about solutions, I'll actually mm. go through a stepwise process to actually show you what you need to do in order to mm. uh, empower yourself, not just with respect to health and wellness, but just life in general, mm. basically. Mm-hmm. So doctors, or myth is that doctors know best how to get their patients health and well. In fact, Western trained doctors are actually not trained uh, in health and wellness. We know they're trained in disease management, which is different to basically health and wellness. Mm. Um, Another myth is that illnesses, you know, are due to genetic factors and there's nothing patients can do about this. 
Now, only a very small percentage of disease and dysfunction is actually due to genetic factors. Mm. Mm. Most, you know, illness and dis- disease and dysfunction, as we know, is caused by lifestyle, environment, bad diets, and chronic psychological stress. And so, and even if you have a genetic propensity to develop a, a disease, you can actually reduce that risk mm. by actually improving your lifestyle, your diet, you know, you're living in a proper environment and so forth, getting rid of chronic psychological stress. So... Uh, another myth, <laughs> so many myths mm. that perpetuate this crisis, is that increasing the number of doctors in the country, you know, will solve the healthcare problems of mm. the country. And I mean, studies have shown that that's not true. There's some doc- there's some st- uh, countries that have a lot of doctors, you know, for the number of uh, uh, people they have in that country, but their life expectancy and the number of years they live in healthy li- uh, healthy life is actually less mm. than countries that have less doctors. So there's no correlation between the number of doctors and the level of health in a country mm. and in life expectancy. Another myth. Another myth. Mm. Another myth is that spending more money on health care, you know, per patient, per capita, is actually going to solve the health crisis. That's also been debunked. Mm. I mean, there's enough studies that show that that's not true. So you can spend as much money as you like. As long as you're not addressing the cause, you're not going to solve the problem. Mm. That's a simple, you know, thing mm. to understand. Uh, <laughs> I'm running out of myths. Mm. There's so many... Pharmaceutical drugs, people believe pharmaceutical drugs will, will, will cure disease and dysfunction. They're not designed to do that. They just basically mask mm. symptoms. Um, antibiotics certainly kill off, you know, bacteria. But the question is, why did the patient get an infection in the first place, you know? Mm. So, and, and we know pharmaceutical drugs, you know, can be dangerous. So, so uh, and also another myth is that conventional medicine is advanced medicine. Western medicine is advanced medicine. You know, it's actually not true on many levels. Mm. You know, Western medicine doesn't really acknowledge nutrition, you know, as an important mm. aspect of, of health and wellness mm. and disease management. Even disease management, you know, they don't regard nutrition as important. When in fact, diet and nutrition is the foundation of health and wellness. Mm. You know. mm. uh, they don't understand the difference between living and dead food, you know, the mind-body connection, the bioenergy fields of living systems. So there's many, many myths that actually are perpetuating this crisis mm. and people need to basically understand that, yeah. Mm. Dr. Faiz Kirsten in studio with me this morning and we're talking about the global health crisis and also the myths which perpe- which perpetuate it and also um, I think it is definitely important for people to, to know um, how how people are in fact contributing, especially the policy makers, how they are contributing towards this uh, um, global health crisis. Um, but, but today we're looking at some solutions and looking at the, the causes and not exactly just trying to cover and mask some of the, the symptoms, etc. Are you basically telling us, Dr. Faiz, that um, we are part of a system that really doesn't work with the natural self, that doesn't work in line with how we are supposed to be functioning because they're giving us things that will further make us... I don't know. Absolutely. I think our systems are not uh, in harmony with natural law. Mm. Okay, so you're a natural being. You're a natural creation of the creator, of God. And so you and you were designed to uh, to be healthy and well if you give your body natural things that it needs, okay? Mm. <laughs> like nutrients, which are what your cells need to function. Now, if you're putting anti-nutrients or toxins into your body, then it's not reasonable to expect your body to to mm. be healthy because mm. it's not designed that way. And so our systems are designed not to to work in harmony with natural law, mm. but to actually work against natural law in disharmony with natural law. And that is why what we're seeing, in our, so our inner world is actually um, in chaos. So our outer world is in chaos. Our, mm. We're all sick. The world mm. is in a mess. And we'll talk about that just now, mm. why that is the case when we come mm. to the solution. Yeah, yeah um, I'm sure that um, Dr. Faiz, you've heard the term um, fitra and how we are all born with you know true nature or true fitra and that the the not not just the system but how we also live it's against that particular nature which is as you mentioned part of the reason why we see everything is basically um chaotic yeah basically everything's unnatural you know mm. we're living an unnatural life we are natural beings but we're living unnatural lives mm. we're living in an unnatural environment we're breathing in toxins all the time we're living in polluted environments um our minds are polluted our bodies are polluted you know our spirit is polluted <laughs> because mm. we're living in this unnatural situation mm. mm-hmm. and we can't expect to be healthy and well and be in harmony with nature 
if in fact we're doing everything wrong mm-hmm. you know so i'm i'm um, i'm i'm thinking particularly because you we making use of the word natural quite um quite a lot so mm-hmm. i'm thinking that um alternative medicine is probably the better option is it well alternative is actually real medicine mm. you know western medicine it should be the alternative medicine because <laughs> yeah. you should first go to the real stuff okay you should be doing the real thing natural means not man made mm. mm. so it's made by not by human beings it's mm-hmm. found in nature and nature's created by god okay yeah and and i and i understand that alternative medicine really uh, it works in such a way that it that it allows the body to to heal itself as it should yeah your body is designed to heal i mean your body if i mean if you have a cut you'll find in a few days that cut is you know that, that, that mm. it's closed you know mm. it's healed it's it's a natural process that's how we were created you mm. know when you're injured you heal but you must do the right things for your body you must put the right things in and take mm. whatever is there that shouldn't be there you must remove it detoxing yeah detoxing. i think we must we must just try and remind ourselves again that the body has the ability to heal itself and Correct, not, yeah. and not these pharmaceutical drugs etc no you you got to assist the body in healing itself mm. i mean it needs certain things to heal itself i mean so if you uh, got pneumonia for example you, and you go and you know drink some mercury mm. <laughs> now you got to you got to die you know you got to get really sick because that shouldn't that's not the way you treat a pneumonia you know so mm. you got to do the right thing for the body you know it's a simple principle and dr lee cowden actually has a nice analogy he talks about the bathtub you know health disease and health is like a bathtub on the mm. one side there's taps that when you open them they put in dirty water that's all the stresses that you put in your body physical chemical and emotional stresses mm. and the other side is the clean water taps you open that that's all the good stuff you should be putting in your body mm. you know and then you have the drains you know the the, the plug well, those are the detoxing mm. organs like your kidneys your liver your bowels your skin your lymphatics and so forth Um and so you got to open up those the drain get all the stuff out put in the good stuff and you know you'll be healthy and well but we're doing the opposite actually yeah. putting the bad stuff and de- de- denying the good stuff to our bodies and and the the, mm. the 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 plug is in there so that we can't get rid of all these toxins and so we chronically sick sad is part is that we don't realize that we are doing this to ourselves we are willing well that's the consciousness mm. part and we'll talk about that mm-hmm. yeah. maybe we should go right into the consciousness part Dr. Faiz because i think Um it was um, Tuesday evening that we had quite an interesting documentary on Insight where they looked at how people how doctors are basically taking healthy people and actually making them sick with making them believe that they have certain illnesses and giving them certain bogus um uh, medication that doesn't even um, uh, help you and so you end up having a disease at the end of the day um which for me is one of the very scary things the travesty yeah but because you see it's important for everybody to understand how their minds work and that's consciousness is part of that okay mm. developing your consciousness because if you don't know how your mind works and somebody else knows how your mind works and they have diabolical intentions then they're certainly going to own your mind and mm. that is exactly what's happening across the world people think they own their minds they think they have their own thinking and their own belief systems but a mm. lot of that was put into there was actually mm. planted there and that is the problem because it's a slavery system and uh, how do you control billions of people um across the planet mm. you control their minds that's very simple so that they can just willingly do whatever they do exactly what you want them to do mm. and that's what we see around us in our families our friends our communities people are doing exactly what they what their masters mm. want them to do because they don't really understand their own minds mm-hmm. and and that is a that's not what is instructed you know that's not one of the instructions one of the instructions is to think i think we can almost call it um it falls in the category of blind following is it that's what it is yeah, yeah. Mm. it's brain imbalance and we'll talk about that also yeah mm-hmm. but let's get to the that consciousness part we mentioned some of the myths um the fact that uh, building more hospitals will not solve the health crisis or having more doctors or healthcare profession professionals would also not solve the the problem having more pharmaceutical drugs would not solve the problem and that conventional medicine is not exactly advanced and it also will not solve the problem um and those some of the myths that we spoke about uh, dr faiz but coming to the the consciousness the awareness aspect we we need to get out of this almost bubble where we just believe whatever we hear on um tv or whether it is we we just believe whatever we hear people say and if everyone else is going that direction we just follow like sheep yeah well that is what 
uh, you've heard the term sheeple, which is mm. a terrible term, but it's a combination of sheep and people, you know. So um, that's what we're seeing in the world today. But uh, there's two parts to this. The first part is I've developed this, you know, this model to basically try and solve this problem at the primary care level, which has a couple of aspects to it, which I'll just quickly mention. You've got to sort of, you got to abandon. You first have got to increase your level of consciousness, which I'm going to address now. Then you've got to abandon the allopathic model, which is Western medicine, at least outside trauma and emergency mm-hmm. setting, because uh, we can't really abandon it there. But from a chronic disease perspective, it's, it doesn't work, actually. You got, then you've got to switch to a root cause medicine model. Mm. You've got to abandon the fee for service because that's also a scam. I actually read an article, which I, if you have time, I'll talk about it, mm. which, uh, which actually uh, actually quite scary in America where Medicaid, there's an article on global research says that Medicaid is a scam and it's really what they're trying to do there is insane. Um, so, I mean, I, I knew about this many years ago. Um, then uh, you got to switch to a membership-based model, which, which makes more sense to me. Okay, I don't know if it does to other people. And you've got to include empowerment programs, you know, in this offering and mm. so forth. There's many aspects to it. But optimal health and wellness, one of the aspects of optimal health and wellness is, you know, an understanding and an awareness and an appreciation that your thoughts, your beliefs, your feelings and your behavior have a definite impact on your state of health and that of the world. Mm. And what I mentioned there was something that I call the consciousness trifecta. Okay, now the consciousness trifecta is actually body, mind and spirit. Okay, so your mind are your thoughts and your beliefs, okay? Your spirit is your emotions and your feelings. And your body is your speech, what you say and, and your actions and what you do. And that's what you need to develop. You need to do to develop your consciousness trifecta to mm. the highest level possible that you can. And how do you do that, you know? How do you actually develop this consciousness trifecta? You got to start off by knowing what consciousness is, first of all, okay? And people have very different... Uh, um, definitions of uh, of consciousness. Uh, there's a simple definition which says it's just the ability to understand yourself and to mm. recognize what's going on in yourself, recognize patterns and meanings uh, with what's happening within yourself, but also with what's happening in your environment. If you understand, you know these patterns and 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 these mean and have and you you can interpret them in the proper way, then you have a high level of consciousness. But I think consciousness is also that part of you that actually connects you to absolutely. your creator absolutely you know and, and if you have a low level of consciousness then you won't be well connected With and you. if you're high level of consciousness you'll be mm. very highly mm. connected mm. so there's that aspect to it and that's a, another definition of consciousness mm. which incorporates the first part but also the second part mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. I, I do think that the more conscious we are the more connected we definitely are with our creator you're absolutely right and so when you are connected in, in this on this level then it almost makes things for you much more clear, isn't it? Without a doubt, without a doubt. You, you're you know. able to see things for what it really is. Correct, absolutely. Mm. That mm. is why everybody should be spending at least an hour or so a day developing mm. their consciousness. Mm. You know, that's mm. very important. But very few people actually do this. Mm. You know, They're just basically going along every day doing the same thing and, uh, as I keep saying, watching TV mm. uh, and having their minds programmed for them by people who want them, who want to own them, who mm. actually do already own them, mm. you know, mm. and uh, and it's getting worse, actually. You know. uh, we, we had a conversation uh, last night, um, uh, myself and a group of um, 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 ladies, and we were talking about how certain things that we may have been uh, raised with, uh, fundamental values and, and models, and how, because of how the system is and how we are, without realizing, part of the system, it almost scrapes away from those mo- small little models and, and, and values um, as we c- we go along. And also that when you realize that then you're doing m- most of the things that everyone else is doing, despite your, your consciousness. So sometimes we just also need to almost um, not just be conscious, but also be be reflecting and, and, and really trying to ask yourself whether or not you are going in the same direction as the rest, because it can easily happen and you won't even know it until you are already in too far. Yeah, it happens by stealth. It happens, you know, sort of covertly. You don't mm. actually realize that you, it's some, you know, your mirror neurons in your brain are basically mirroring what you're seeing around you. Okay? I, th- I think it's also part of how we allow for small things. We, we think of it as a small thing. It's not that much of a big thing. And so we, we participate or we do or we whatever. And then all those small little things becomes, has a b- huge impact on, on your life at the end of the day. 
Absolutely, there's a cumulative effect, no mm. doubt about that, you know, and that is why it's so important to think all the time, and uh, we're not thinking most of the day mm. uh, in a real meaningful way. You know, things are happening, we're just going along with it, and we don't really question these things. And mm. At the end of the day, you're part of them, you're part of the system, and you think it's normal. Yeah. So everybody thinks that the system we're living in is completely normal, you know, for them. Mm. <laughs> and if you talk to a lot of, I've spoken to a lot of people, they, they, you know, they think there's nothing wrong. I mean, what's wrong with the system? Mm. There's no other system. I mean, this is the system. Mm. So if you're born in a, in a fish, in a golf, you're a goldfish and you're born in the bowl, then that's all you know is the bowl. Mm. But if you take the goldfish out of the bowl and you hold him up above his bowl, you'll say, wow. I didn't realize there's another world out there. You mm, know? Mm. So we're born into this system and, and that's all we know. We went to school, they programmed us. We went to university, mm. they programmed us. And so our belief system is that this is it. This is the truth, you know? Yeah, and there are, there are various uh, hadith, um, also um, Quranic verses, that actually speaks ex- about exactly this, where we will look at those things that are not exactly right and, and think of it as, as right. And the, the things that are wrong... Um, uh, we we will look at as oh no we will look at the wrong things as right and the right will become things that we s- say it's abnormal. Correct. We live in an inverted world. Yeah. It's a satanically inverted world, and mm. so today what is right, what is right, appears is to ro- be wrong, and what's should, yeah. should be wrong, you know, is taken as right. Mm-hmm. So there's immorality, you know, uh, <laughs> where people think that immoral behavior is actually moral behavior. Dishonesty seems to be valued in, in our society that mm, we live. You know, mm. if you can steal stuff, you know, uh, you're, the, you're the man, you know. <laughs> from, from right up from your government level down to the street sweeper, you know. Mm, uh, mm-hmm. That's valued if you're dishonest and you steal, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. And that is a big, big problem. We do have a caller. You live on the Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Okay, um, uh, a caller, can I please ask you to turn down the volume of your radio? Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yes, um, I'm listening to Dr. about all the myths, and then Dr. just touched now exactly what I wanted to say now, of how the wrong is right, and how the right is wrong. And then I just want to comment to Dr. And I think Dr. is, I mean, I'm listening to him every week now, and I think Dr. is the right person, a spiritual person, the honest person, person and you know we people today that's why we are maybe in this turmoil because our perception in life is we want to do whatever not to keep us healthy but to law lo- to live longer and I mean we can do whatever whatever we want we won't live longer because our death was put out before we were born already so people has got a myth on that also, mm. that they want to live long. And I mean, we can only, only meet our maker, our creator, our sustainer. We can only meet him, only fire death, through death. Mm. If we don't die, we will never meet Allah. And we say every time, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun, that we come from Allah and to Allah is our return. But in actual fact, we don't want to return to Allah because we are trying all the ways to live longer, but we don't live longer. Mm. We can try to live healthier, yes. Mm. And like this doctor is telling us now, guiding us how to live healthier. Shukran, mm. doctor. Shukran, Shukran. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before you comment, we have one more call. Okay, 0216 Or you may WhatsApp your comments to 786 10 11 12. Uh, Dr. Faiz Kirsten in studio with me this morning and of course a medical doctor and extensive experience in various aspects of healthcare speaking to us about the global health crisis some of the myths um, around um, some of the, the, the what will really um, contribute towards w- w- moving away from this crisis but indeed um, unpacking those myths and really talking about the real issue and what we should be uh, conscious about so we did it just touching on consciousness and being away and we were talking just before the caller about how the things that is supposed to be wrong how it appears to be right and how we feed into this and and and, and actually believe it um we have our caller back let's first go there you live on here assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum Zainabin and um your doctor you know i like what he's saying i mean you're unpacking the whole case scenario the 
question is, how exactly do we get to, you know, decolonize the mind and then reprogram it constructively? That I will leave to the doc. I'd like to hear that on here. Shukran. Shukran so much. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Dr. Faiz, the question is in your... Um, the ball is in my yeah. court. <laughs> Very good points by both callers. Shukran for that, brothers. I really love those questions. The call, it is not about the length of life, as brothers write. Mm. No, it's about the quality of life. You know? Yeah. So if you're living, if you're going to live till the age of 50 and you're living in a really bad you know, quality of life, you know, that's, that's not good. You're not... The instruction is not for you to be sick in the mm. Quran. There's verses in the Quran that actually tell you about health and wellness. There's a verse in the Quran that talks about pomegranates, mm. you know, and it was found that pomegranates uh, actually kill cancer stem cells. Chemotherapy doesn't. That's why chemotherapy doesn't work. Mm. It mm. kills off your normal cells and it doesn't kill off the stem cell. That's why when you have chemo, uh, cancer comes back. But it's been found that pomegranates actually kill the stem cells. Mm. So they put chemotherapy to shame, pomegranates, okay? And that's in the Quran. So the Quran promotes health and wellness, and it's about quality of life, not Mm. about the length of life. As Mm. the brother's quite right, you know, you know, you'll die when Allah says, you know, that's your time to die. Mm -hmm. The other question is how, you know, how do we colonize the mind and reprogram it? That's exactly what I'm talking about in solutions. I've been working on this forever. (laughs) I've developed tools and techniques and books and programs to do exactly this mm. is to reprogram putting different programs into your subconscious because we're living our lives according to other people's programs that they've put in there mm. Mm. that is why we're in this mess okay mm. we're not living the, our lives according to the programs that we should be living our lives by when, when i say programs we like computers. We're not, we're not computers, but we are like computers. Computers don't have emotions, mm. but computers run on programs. Mm. So if you start up your computer which has Windows or whatever, it's going to run according to a certain pro- that program. Mm. Mm-hmm. So when our buttons are pressed, you know, the programs run, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and then we act accordingly. So we got to reprogram ourselves. I've mm. developed tools. Uh, as I said, brain of entrainment is one of the major things that help me reprogram myself and okay. I still use it all the time mm-hmm. you know it, it, I mean amazing results every time okay uh, we, we have two callers holding you live on the Assalamu Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum Sainabi Wa Alaikum Assalam Assalam Doctor how are you Doctor? Alhamdulillah 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 How are you brother are you well? Alhamdulillah this is, uh, uh, you know as always I'm always grateful for Arab for this time and space you know uh, you know th- I'd like to start off with that with Allah's name you talk to, you know, people always ask, how do they decolonize their minds? There's a surah in the, uh, there's an ayah in the Quran that says, Allah, uh, that the people who are learned, we must be very careful for. They can undermine us. I mean, that is the meaning of that verse. I mean, all the translations says that we must predict, that, that we must be careful for those that are learned because they can use their knowledge to make us subservient. Now, when we speak about decolonizing our minds, we haven't questioned why we are living in this quagmire of social problems. Besides, we cannot blame them. America can do what they like. The West can do what they like. But for, for as long as we follow them, and for as long as we don't question how they are, uh, uh, you know, what life is all about, then we won't decolonize our minds. Now, if we look at uh, uh, how our Nabi's name was used, during the political eras, because most of the political uh, time when, uh, during the Abbasid Empire, during the Umayyad Empire, these politicians used the scholars. In fact, some of the scholars were even put in jail because they do not want to print what they wanted them to print. But what I'm trying to say is, we are so indoctrinated by, 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 by our dean, by, you know, by our dean that, that we just follow, 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 follow without questioning, without reverting to the premise of our deen. And what is our premise, doctor? Our premise is our Qur'an. Mm-hmm. That, is, that must be the measure of everything. Any sheikh that comes with a hadith, we've got to measure it with the Qur'an. And this is what people is not doing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and uh, by decolonizing our mind, we can become creative. I mean, you know, we look at our history. We were great scholars. We contributed to the, towards medicine. We contributed towards the sciences. We contributed towards everything. Okay. But we are struggling now to get our social order in, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I mean, in place. 
because of what has happened you know, over the past. But we must actually question how they've used our beloved Rasul's name for political gain and for, and for political expediency. Mm-hmm. And this is what, uh, you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a, a ulama or ever, but when you read the Quran and you and then look at the Quran speaking to you, you get all these answers. Mm. All these Brother answers Israel. are there. Okay. But we're not going there, Sheikh. Why? I mean, we, we, you know, there's a school, I believe, okay. that, that this opened in Kasi Park. It's Hadith the first year, Hadith the second year, and it's Hadith the, the third year. They made it a science without even mentioning the Quran. Okay, brother Israel. We make the Quran yeah. a second, a, a, a second. Uh, 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 yeah, this information. Whereas that should be our first, our first step, mm. and okay. then we can go to the hadith. There are many, many beautiful hadith uh, on Nabi, but there are Ishmael? many, many, many that doesn't belong to his name. Brother Ishmael, and I think that is where we must start as Muslims, because Ishmael. when you brother Ishmael, we have Muslims, brother Ishmael, we have um, so. another caller holding. And oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. Was, then. Shukran so much for your time. Salam wa rahmatullah. Ilaha wa salam alaikum. Okay, zero two one six nine nine one seven eight six or zero seven eight six ten eleven twelve. This is Community Pulse on Radio Seven Eight Six, and we are talking about some of the myths um, around the global health crisis with Dr. Faiz Kirsten, and we mentioned a few of them, and um, we really also just touched on consciousness and the importance of being conscious when it comes to what is happening around us. But let's just go to the line. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam Zainab and uh, Doctor. Wa alaikum salam. I think I think there's a there's a very important aspect of 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 our neglect in in terms of when we look at the metaphysics of certain health conditions. For example, giving sadaqa. What does sadaqa do to health? How does sadaqa and good deeds latch onto? Your energy, it latches onto your positive energy. When you perform Umrah or Hajj and you go to Mecca, the, ele- the positive electromagnetic fields in Mecca and Medina is not like any other part of the world. When you're doing the Tawaf around the Kaaba, the seven circuits around the cells within the body moves in a, and it reaches at the seventh point of positive energy. Now, when we start investigating the signs of what is really in the Quran, why does Allah swear by the olive and the fig? Now, if you investigate the olive and the fig, then you will find an amazing, amazing research that has been done. If one looks at the miswak that's being neglected and we are using Colgate and toothpaste that has chemicals in it, and we turn ourselves towards those things that has uh, uh, been traditionally used as a sunnah. Now, why is the sunnah being neglected? The sunnah is being neglected because of Western modernity. But what does the sunnah bring about within the health of people? Why do you need to sleep on the right-hand side? Doctors know that. Why do you need to eat with your hands? Doctors know that. And this scientific research of the sunnah is bringing up more uh, uh, um, uh, relevance to us okay. to turn our mm. qibla towards the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I think the sunnah of, uh, of the scientific uh, research, when they wanted to know what was in Nabi, Nabi Yusuf's shirt that made Nabi Yusuf see when he smelt his father's shirt, then scientists then discovered that it was the sweat of Nabi Yusuf alayhi salam, and then they discovered that when you use your human sweat and eat your eyes, and those type of uh, researches, but how come Muslims seem to undermine our, all our mm. hidden wonderful gifts? Mm, and yet when westernization, western, western um, researches come about, we in all of it, mm. but yet right in front of you, in your book, in your sunnah, it is there, but it's undermined. Mm-hmm. Shukran, Shukran so much. Shukran so much for that contribution. We go back to the lines. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, Dr. Kirsten. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a spanner in the works here. Mm-hmm. And it's relevant to the subject you are talking about now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find it very strange to, to, uh, to, to read about how people understand about your time has come, your death, and things like that. Did Allah Ta'ala, is Allah Ta'ala uh, unfair? Uh, he has given the Japanese long life, 
long lifespan. And if you say, okay, you guys in Africa, from Ethiopia down the line here, we're going to give you only a, a, a lifespan of about 40 or 40 or 50 or 60. Is that what life has? Is, is that how um, Allah Ta'ala lays out death? I, 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 I fail to understand it, and it's, it's relevant to the to what Dr. Kirsten is talking about, uh, about your lifestyle, about your choices, about all those things. I need doctor to answer from you. Okay, shukran so much. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Dr. Faiz, you have quite a number of issues that you need to deal with. Um, yes. Yeah, the first brother phony asked a very good question. He says, you know, why? That is actually the question we should all be asking. Mm. You'll never be able to solve a problem if you don't know the answer to the question, why? Okay. But I, I, I can, before you answer mm. that, there's a, in fact, someone that answered the question, they say, that uh, shukran so much for reiterating our, our shortcomings the solution is the very first revelation ikra unshackle your mind and free your intellect yeah yeah there we go <laughs> <laughs> there we go mm-hmm. um so when you ask why you'll find the cause mm. of why you have the problem if you don't ask why then you will not uh, in fact you should ask why five times it'll get you to the to the to the root cause of the problem so the Quran has all the answers and we're just not using it. It's really part of the programming. It's part of the Novus Ordo Seclorum agenda is to get people away from the truth and, um, you know, towards falsehood. And that's where we are today. You know, we have a low level of consciousness because our, our, our perception is far away from the truth. The truth never wavers. It's a straight line. But your perception can be of a high frequency. Your consciousness can be high frequency or low frequency. If it's high frequency, it's going to align with the truth m- more frequently, okay? And uh, if you're vibrating at a low level, your perception is, you know, a very low vibration, then you will be far away from the truth most of the time. And so we've been kept through, a, it's, a, it's a part of the agenda, is to keep us away from the truth as much as possible. Mm. And so that's why we don't seek out the truth, because we think we already know what the truth is, but in fact, that's just a false perception that we have. It's a false belief, basically, coming, the perception coming from your false belief, which is a delusion, like we said in the joke, okay? Uh, the question of long life is a very good question, actually, very, very good question. As long as you're living, you know, your life according to natural law, God's law, then uh, you will live the life that you should be living and the length of, I don't know, you know, a guy can be living, you know, extremely healthy life. I mean, one doctor, I think he was in his 70s or something, alternative doctor, he was exceptionally healthy. And then they killed him. <laughs> okay, was that his time? You know, this is a very important question. Well, these questions, oftentimes we can't really answer that. And it's all in God's, you know, Allah knows best, as they say. But as long as you doing what you should be doing, you shouldn't be worrying about the time, the length of time you're going to live. People in Okinawa, Japan, live over 100. There's blue zones across the world where people live over 100. They call them mm. blue zones. Because their health, their lifestyle is so healthy. They're doing exactly the right thing that uh, is required for them to live a long, healthy life. Mm. So they're living in harmony with natural law. And we have the same tools. We have the same tools. I mean, for example, you'll see people will recite the Quran maybe s- several times a year. and uh, But they won't understand what they're reading because they don't understand Arabic. Uh, so they don't read the English. Um, but, they, but they will be reading, you know, Oh mankind, eat what is lawful and good for you in the earth. Okay? Mm. <laughs> Uh, but the, every day they'll be doing exactly the opposite and then get chronically ill and then die prematurely. Mm, mm-hmm. That's because they haven't been living in harmony with natural law. So the length of life you're living is depending uh, dependent up, upon, I on think, how, your, you how you live in terms of mm. natural law, ha- within um, harmony with natural law or disharmony with mm. natural law. Yeah. This is Radio 786 and the program Community Pulse. We have a few WhatsApp messages that came via 0786 10 11 12. The global health crisis and the myths um, that uh, surround it. But before we do anything else, let's first go to the lines. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to you and the doctor. Well, and all your listeners. Uh, in fact, I would like to add what the previous caller has mentioned about destiny. Because we are brought up also in mythical beliefs, we think Allah is a bookkeeper. Allah sits there and he keeps account every year. This person is going to make so many millions. This one is going to die on that date. This one is going to get married on this date. This is all myth and legend. Because the Muslims don't read the Quran thoroughly, like the, like, the, like the doctor said, they read only the Arabic and they don't understand the essence. Even the Arabs, unfortunately, don't understand the essence of the Quran. Now, we're all behind this, uh, this satanic system that is created by the Jal. Uh, the question is, who will destroy the Jal and how will the Jal be killed? It, uh, uh, it's not going to be done by any political organization. 
not by any uh, financial organization, not by any medical organization. This is going to be done by the hands of Allah, by Him sending someone appointed by Him. That's why this person is called al Masih. al Masih actually means the healer. The one that will heal the people mentally, spiritually, and in their beliefs. Because we've inherited many mythical beliefs in our understanding of Islam. That's why we don't understand these things. That's why we run around in circles and we don't okay. find answers to uh, uh, okay. all these questions. Like they said, truth will be turned into lies and lies will be turned into truth. Because people don't have the time and they don't have the sacrifice and make the effort to understand and research these things. Okay. Shukran wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have only about uh, four, uh, less than five minutes left. And one of the questions that also came via WhatsApp says, so how do I clean my inner self and move to positive lifestyle? Yeah, well, shukran for that, brother, the last caller. And that's exactly right. Part of this process of raising your level of consciousness, of developing your consciousness trifecta, is actually to search for true information. There's a lot of disinformation, deliberately false information out there, and there's also a lot of misinformation, mistakenly false information out there. So your duty is to search for true information. And there's many sources of information, but obviously the best source is the Quran, okay? It's not a man-made source. It comes from God himself, okay? So that's your next step, okay? The next, then, um, um, you must also then process this information. So it's not just about finding the information and just reading it and not understanding it. You've got to think about it, mm. process it, committed to memory, critically think, actually, not just think. And that's called processing information. And so if you participate in certain programs, whatever programs that's gonna, that you're going to participate in, which are going to help you to process this information, it's going to help you to reprogram your mind. And there's various tools and techniques that you know some of these programs use. Also, it'll help you to heal from abuse. People are carrying a lot of trauma around with mm. them, psychological trauma mm. from abandonment issues, adverse childhood experiences, and these things cause brain imbalance, okay? Mm. And if you're not going to clear out all this trauma from your system, then it's going to drive your life in a very destructive way, which is mm. happening to many people across mm. the world, okay? So you have to process the information, participate in programs which is going to free you from all this chaos that's existing within your body because the law of correspondence is as above, so below, as below, so above, as within, so without, as without, so within. So if you have chaos within yourself, your trifecta is in chaos, then your outer world is going to be in chaos. Mm. And so you really need to, uh, to free yourself by going through certain programs you know, mm. uh, in a proper way. And then this process information turns into knowledge. That's what knowledge is. There's a difference between knowledge and information. Mm. Information is basically static. You know, it's just there. But knowledge is processed information. And then once you have the knowledge, because knowledge, once you have knowledge, you know you can make better decisions in every area of your life. Mm. Without knowledge, you can't make better decisions. Mm. So as we said, you've got to read the Quran with knowledge, with understanding, so that you have knowledge of the Quran, not just reading it without mm. any understanding. You just mm. have some information, or you may not have any information if you read it without really knowing what you're reading. And then knowledge produces beliefs, okay? So your beliefs are then going to, mm. as I said, beliefs are instructions. So those beliefs will then instruct your life how in which direction it must go, if it's mm. the right beliefs based on the right knowledge. Inshallah. Just uh, your concluding remarks um, in terms of moving forward, especially with looking at how we can get ourselves out of this, this crisis, inshallah. Um, maybe I must give a quote by a guy called Donald S. McIlvaney. You know, he's a... He was an, he's an intelligent uh, person, intelligent person, he's an editor and author and so forth. He said, in every declining civilization, and there is a small remnant of people who adhere to the right against the wrong, who recognize the difference between good and evil, and who will take an active stand for the former against the latter, who can still think and discern, and who will courageously take a stand against the political, social, moral, and spiritual decay of their day. We mu- well, that's what he said. And I say we must be those people. Why? Because living in harmony with natural law actually leads to freedom, peace, prosperity, and survival. Mm. And Allah calls to the home of peace, as He says in the Quran. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On that note, you can so much, you, Dr. Faiz, and inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to see things for what it really is, inshallah. I mean, and that concludes the first hour. Until next week, Dr. Faiz, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zainab, shukran once again for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. Stay with Radio 786 and 100.4 FM as Community Pulse continues. Shortly, we'll have the, na- the latest news.